Technology is advancing at an incredibly rapid pace. Every year we're being introduced to newer, faster, better technologies that we just need to get our hands on. And although these tech companies have done an incredible job branding their products, many consumers tend to forget the dangers that inevitably come with the new technology. Aside from the lack of years studying long-term negative effects, something we do know is that things like radiation, which a lot of technology emits, is bad for us. Yet we still have cell phones, some of us even two or three. However, However, multiple studies have confirmed the radiation from our cell phones, as well as other technology we use daily, don't emit high enough radio frequencies to necessarily damage our DNA or tissue, so nothing to worry about there. But with the release of a new generation network, 5G, many are wondering, is it safe? Today on Life's Biggest Questions, we're asking, are 5G networks dangerous? What's going on guys? Welcome back to LBQ. I'm your host for this one, Jared Bronstein, and today we're talking about Canada's fastest growing network, 5G, only available through LBQ. Now that was my attempt at one of those bad US cell phone commercials. Anyways guys, stick around till the end of this one for some fun comment replies and make sure to drop us some comments below with other videos you would like to see on our channel. For now, let's get right into this one. As of now, the majority of you guys are currently using a 4G LTE network on your smartphones. Sometimes when the connection gets a little weaker, you'll drop down to 3G, but usually you're sitting pretty at 4G LTE. Now telecommunication companies are introducing 5G, which is of course the best and fastest technology out there. Much like 3G and then 4G LTE, LTE, 5G is just the new kid on the block that everyone is talking about. In a few years, we'll probably be talking about the new 6G rumored to come out. The same thing as the iPhones, these things come out and are the hottest thing in the market. Then after a short period of time, it's on to the next one. But unlike physical technology like our smartphones and computers or tablets, networks don't tend to be upgraded on a yearly basis. In fact, it's believed 5G was first talked about and researched back in 2008, but wouldn't be available to the majority of the general public until 2020. So what are the main differences between 4G LTE and 5G networks? Well, it all really comes down to download speed. Wireless networks have always been in the same category as radios when it comes to the frequencies they let off, as per the electromagnetic spectrum. The spectrum breaks down the types of wavelengths or frequencies emitted by things such as our radio, microwave, and even the sun. As you can imagine, the sun gives off higher energy radiation, being on the high end of the spectrum, whereas microwaves and our radios are on the lower end. So with all this in mind, that would mean that 4G LTE networks are just as safe, or dangerous, depending on how you look at things, as our radio. 5G networks are a different story. Rather than using radio waves the way radios and 4G LTE networks do, 5G uses a different type of wave called millimeter. Millimeter waves are able to use frequencies ranging from 30 to 300 gigahertz, which can be anywhere from 10 to 100 times faster than our current 4G networks. Meaning aside from actual phone calls and text messages being sent and received even faster than they already are, downloads like apps and music will also run smoother. Now here's where the issues regarding safety and new technology arise. Millimeter waves are absorbed much easier compared to their predecessors. Buildings in a major metropolitan city like Toronto or New York would surely cause problems for a 5G network as the frequency would simply have a hard time reaching one end of a connection, if at all. This requires 5G networks to bounce off what are called small cells, which are mini cell towers of sorts. They're much smaller than your average cell tower and don't use nearly as much power. They can even be placed on top of buildings, so it's not like finding the space for these mini towers is going to be an issue. It's the amount of towers required for the network to successfully run that may scare some off. For a 5G network to run smoothly, it would require tons of these small cells placed relatively close to one another. Of course, when someone hears a bunch of smaller cell phone towers are going to be placed all around the city emitting radio frequencies, people are bound to be a little worried, and I don't blame them. But it seems there isn't much threat or anything to worry about at all. The idea of these mini towers will just allow us to have a faster connection, receive and send data, as well as download while using the network at the fastest possible speeds. And technically, 5G is still using the same radio waves as 4G, just at a higher frequency. Now let's talk about our health. As previously mentioned, there have been studies done which lead researchers to believe radio frequency and radiation emitted from cell phones don't cause cancer or tumors. Some do believe that the radiation can help expedite the speed of a pre-existing growth, but these studies have led to mixed results. Ultimately, it has been determined that the frequencies our phones give off aren't strong enough to break through our DNA the way ultraviolet rays do, for example. And because of this, the majority of the scientific world is in the camp that the radiation emitted from our cell phones can't possibly lead to cancerous growth in our bodies. And that is good news, but it's also incredibly important to mention, cell phones are still incredibly new. We're talking less than 50 years old, and they haven't really been used by the general public for more than maybe the past two decades. I can tell you right now, back in the 90s, people weren't texting their friends to meet up in the Nirvana concert. So it's important to keep in mind that as of now, the data we have leads healthcare professionals to believe there isn't much of a risk, but that doesn't mean there isn't 
isn't a risk at all. It's quite possible 50 years down the road, we learn that cell phones are worse for you than the sun when exposed long term. Unfortunately, only time will tell. So then what does that mean for 5G? Well, if it isn't obvious, it's still incredibly early. We're going to learn a lot more about 5G as the days, weeks, and months go on, the same way we've been learning more and more about our current pandemic. As with anything, the more time we're given to study and understand, the more educated we're going to be. Meaning studies may come out regarding 5G that changes everything that we thought we knew. But until then, we can only talk about what we do know. So let's focus on that. The type of radiation that can be harmful to us is called ionizing radiation. Ionizing radiation can be found in ultraviolet light, which is why we are told to wear sunscreen to protect ourselves. The energy coming from these ultraviolets short wavelengths are strong enough to damage our DNA and skin cells, which is why the sun can lead to nasty burns or even types of cancer. 5G networks, which use millimeter waves as previously mentioned, are not nearly strong enough to affect us in such a negative way. Kenneth Foster, a professor of bioengineering at Pennsylvania State University explained, I quote, there's often confusion between ionizing and non-ionizing radiation because the term radiation is used for both. All light is radiation because it is simply energy moving through space. It's ionizing radiation that is dangerous because it can break chemical bonds. The only established hazard of non-ionizing radiation is too much heating. At high exposure levels, radio frequency energy can indeed be hazardous, producing burns or other thermal damage. But these exposures are typically incurred only in occupational settings near high-powered radio frequency transmitters, or sometimes in medical procedures gone awry. So although it's quite evident that 5G is in fact just as safe as 4G, or 4G LTE, at least as far as we're concerned, why are people still so worried? Ignorance is bliss. People hear radiation and think immediately, it must be bad. Yet we all still have microwaves, Wi-Fi, and cell phones. But it's not just the radiation that is concerning people during this transition to 5G. For those of you unaware, we're currently dealing with a deadly virus and disease, which has led to a worldwide pandemic. And some people have gone as far as saying that 5G is responsible for the spread of said virus. Yes. You heard me correctly. People think a data network is responsible for spreading a viral infection, which can be transmitted from human to human. There's an entire Facebook group dedicated to the belief called Stop 5G Australia. As you can imagine, those a part of the page genuinely believe that 5G networks are responsible for the spread of the new virus. Now, I wish I could tell you guys I was joking. Of course, some celebrities are on board with this theory as well, with Woody Harrelson sharing his two cents about it, as well as singer MIA, most famously known for her song, Paper Planes. The idea behind this theory is that the radiation is helping spread the virus or disease in those already affected, which doesn't make much sense because it seems there is no connection between the two. Most likely piggybacking off the idea that cell phone radiation can expedite the growth of tumors and cancers in one's body, which also isn't necessarily true, word got out that 5G can do the same if you're already infected with Rona. This has actually led to public protest and people in the UK specifically knocking down cell phone towers, with some even being lit on fire. Unfortunately, those sharing this incorrect information are simply spreading ignorance among the masses. And with a general consensus that all radiation is bad and harmful, it doesn't take a rocket science to figure out if you tell people 5G emits more radiation than its predecessor, people are going to freak out. The reality is, that's just the way of social media. And much like our current pandemic, you need to trust the professionals who actually know what they're talking about. If a health minister tells the general public to stay home due to a potentially deadly airborne virus, but some guy on Facebook compares it to a common cold, who are you going to listen to? The talk about 5G is no different. Someone who's been studying the science behind it for decades will know more about the guy who just read a Vice article is all I'm trying to say. So to wrap up, no, 5G networks don't appear to be any more or less dangerous than 4G. They both use the same wavelength, just different frequencies. That being said, it is still incredibly early on and these studies are based on what we currently do know. The information given is certainly subject to change and there are many variables such as how long someone talks on the phone, whether they're using handheld or speaker, the list goes on and on when determining health risks. At the end of the day, just drink a lot of water, eat your vitamins or vegetables, and try to get some exercise. Leading a generally healthy lifestyle overall should protect you from most of the daily things life will throw at you. Worrying about the unknown will just drive you crazy. But as always, I want to hear from you guys, so be sure to drop us some comments down below. For now, let's reply to some comments from the video, what if the virus mutates? Amber Squirrel said, every other channel, we can get through this. We'll find a way to stop the coronavirus. Life's biggest questions. LOL, what if there is no cure? <laughs> We're simply just trying to show you guys both sides. You know, it's important to stay positive. It's important to have a good mindset. But at the same time, guys, like, it's a virus. It's known that there are no cures for viruses. So we're just kind of stating facts. That's it. We're just trying to be very honest and state the facts. I want to state facts, guys. Facts. Triple Creeper 360 said, if it mutates, then it's going to be Resident Evil all over again. What do you mean by all over again? I saw that comment and I was like, when did it happen before? Was I not around for this? I don't understand. Nathan Fessenden said, life's biggest questions. What if it mutates? Me, wanting wings. Hmm. I mean, I don't lie, guys. If this whole thing turned us into like, like a super genetic 
you know, I don't know what I'm trying to say, guys. I was, what I'm trying to get at is like if we become like a superhuman form, like certain people become genetically mutated and, and get superpowers because of this virus, that'd be kind of cool. I don't think it's going to happen, but it'd be kind of cool. Ahmed3905 said, me to people, I hope they find a cure. Me deep inside, yes, mutate, I will get to stay at home longer. I don't know about you guys, but I'm kind of going crazy staying at home. Uh, I, I, I would definitely not mind, you know, being able to go out, see some friends, go to the gym, even work from the studio with the other hosts. It'd be, it'd be nice to see, you know, the editors and, and everybody, like the whole crew. So, just me. All right, then. Well, guys, going to wrap this one up. I've been your host, Jared Bronstein. You guys have been watching Life's Biggest Questions, and we'll see you guys in the next one.